A year ago, I modified the transaxle on my John Deere D130 riding mower to enable me to change the oil without having to take it off the machine. I've had no issues so far, so I thought I would change the oil and see what it looks like. I just ran it for a few minutes to heat up the transmission, and now we can pull the plugs and let it drain. For anyone who's never seen this before, the case has two reservoirs, one for the gearing and another for the hydro pump. They're connected at the top, but since they aren't connected at the bottom, you have to pull two drain plugs to get it all out. The oil in the expansion tank looks pretty clean. These are the two drain plugs that I added when I modified the trans. This transaxle is a Tough Torque T40J, which is a sub-variant of the popular K46. I'll throw links in the description for the other videos in this transmission mod series if you want to check those out. If you like stuff like this, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. Alright, we got all the oil drained out. Wow, it looked clean in the expansion tank, but now that I have it in a pan, there's definitely a decent amount of fine metal particles floating around. When I slosh it around, you can see kind of swirly clouds going on there. I gotta say I'm a bit surprised. After only one year, I figured this would come out totally clean. So, I'm gonna pump in my new oil using this pump that's normally used for filling the lower unit on marine engines with gear oil. I'm using Mobile One 5W50 again. I do want to try Tough Torque's brand of oil, but I still had some 5W50 on hand, so I'm just going to use it. I bought two new drain plugs with crush washers. Realistically, all you need is a new washer. To pump the oil in, I need to put in one drain plug, and then put my pump on the other drain hole. While I was torquing the drain plug, I totally stripped it out with this garbage torque wrench from Harbor Freight. What was going to be a 20 minute job has set me back big time. I'm going to treat this mistake as an opportunity to check out how things have been holding up inside the transmission since modifying it. Back at the bench, I've already removed the trans from the machine. Let's take off the bottom pan. Okay, there we go. Ooh, look at that, there's some pretty good flakes of metal stuck to the filter screen. That's good it got caught by the filter, but man, that's not cool that we have metal flakes floating around. The magnets are a little dirty, but not too bad. Hmm, we have some fine metal particles stuck in the bottom pan as well. Alright, well, on with the disassembly. Let's take the pump out and see how the surfaces are holding up since I have these parts rebuilt. Ah, these magnets are a little dirty as well. The gears look okay so far. Let's not drop any of the pump parts. The pump surfaces don't look terrible, but there's definitely some wear going on. I can feel my fingernail catch on these circular lines on the face of the center case. Off camera, I took a piece of 3000 grit sandpaper and put it on top of a mirror and very carefully wet sanded the center case and the two cylinder blocks. I'm kind of taking a risk by doing this, but I just went for it. I cleaned up the parts afterwards and this is how they look. You can still see some circular marks, but my fingernail doesn't catch in them like it did before. Alright, this is as far as I need to go for disassembly. I'm going to fix the stripped out drain plug by drilling it out and moving up to a 10mm threaded hole compared to the old 8mm hole. I got a 10mm drain plug and a 10mm tap and drill kit to enlarge and tap the new threads. I'll include links in the description below for all the parts and tools used in this video. I drilled the original drain plug holes by hand with my cordless drill. For a little extra security, I decided to use my drill press to enlarge them. I used a few drops of cutting fluid to help the bit cut through the aluminum cleanly. To make sure everything stays square, I chucked my 10mm tap into my drill press that is unplugged. I can spin the chuck by hand to get the tap started and ensure that it is perpendicular to the case. Back at my bench, I attached my tap handle and finished tapping the hole. This drain plug has a neodymium magnet at the end, and the overall bolt length is too long for the gear side of the transmission case. I ended up cutting it with a hacksaw off camera and discovered that cutting through neodymium is pretty sketchy. There's several reasons why this is a bad idea, but the most surprising was that neodymium chips catch on fire. I recommend going with a 10mm drain plug that doesn't have a magnet in it. I put everything back together and unbeknownst to me at the time, I sheared the bypass pin in half when bolting down the center case. If you listen carefully, you can hear a pop sound. After I put the transaxle back on my mower, I was going through the air purging procedure and discovered that the wheels were spinning even with the bypass rod pulled out. So I pulled the trans off the machine again and cracked it open. Here's what I found. 
The bypass pin was totally sheared in half. I think I pushed it too far into the little hole in the center case and it probably got hung up on the top of the rod that normally presses against it. I ordered myself a new pin and I also bought some 10mm flange bolts because I wasn't really happy with my hacked up drain bolt. I also picked up this sweet aluminum crush washer kit that I'll use with the new bolts. When I filled the trans with oil, I found it annoying having two different sized drain plug holes. So I'm going to take a minute to drill out the second drain hole so both will be 10mm and use the same plugs. Man, things have really escalated from just an oil change, right? Okay, so I got the second hole drilled out and tapped. I want to shave down this little fin next to the hole so that it doesn't interfere with the larger size drain plug. I already shaved this down once before when I originally did the transmission mod. I'm just going to do a little more to make sure everything fits well. Alright, this looks great. My new pin arrived in the mail and I'm ready to assemble this for hopefully the final time. This time I'm going to be very careful not to push the bypass pin too far into the center case. Okay, here's a pro tip from learning the hard way. Before I crank down the center case, I'm going to actuate the bypass lever and verify that the little bypass pin functions properly by slightly separating the cylinder block and the center case. This little crack is what allows the oil to get diverted out of the pump and lose pressure so you can push your mower around without any resistance from the transmission. Let's torque down the center case and perform one final check. Alright, the bypass is working great. I'm also going to give the brake disc a spin and make sure that nothing is binding up. A viewer in one of the previous videos in this series had this suggestion. Thanks for the great tip. I'm going to take a minute to wipe the edges of the case with some alcohol. I've already thoroughly cleaned it with brake cleaner, but putting the center case assembly back in got oil in a few spots. I'm using the recommended RTV silicone that I've used before in my previous videos. It's linked in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, let's close this thing up. You'll notice that I've ditched my Harbor Freight torque wrench and I picked up this digital wrench made by a company called Gear Wrench. I'm really liking the digital torque wrench and I feel more confident in its accuracy than the Harbor Freight special click type wrench. I posted a video recently where I tested this wrench's accuracy. I'll include a link in the video description for anyone that's interested. Let's use a little video magic and put the trans back on the machine. An unexpected consequence of increasing the drain plug holes is that my 8mm pump for putting the oil in the trans no longer fits. So I made an adapter using one of my new flange bolts. I drilled and tapped an 8mm hole in the head of the bolt, and then I drilled a smaller hole through the center for the oil to flow through. Honestly, this was my favorite part of this giant mess that I got myself into. I just love fabricating things from scratch. Anyway, so using my handy adapter, I can screw in my oil pump into one of the drain plug holes. I like to fill from the pump side of the transmission and have it spill over into the gear side and finally come out into the expansion tank. Alright, let's pump the oil in. I 
I threw a piece of plastic over the vent cap on the expansion tank to hopefully create a fluid lock when replacing the pump fitting with the actual drain plug. I'm not sure how well this worked because when I did the bolt switcheroo, it kind of burped a blob of oil. I had the drain plug ready to go so I didn't lose much oil at all though. After having stripped out the old drain plug, I'm not super hot on the idea of torquing these bolts down. I'm just going to hand tighten them to what feels good. Something like a quarter turn after a hand tight. That should put enough pressure on the crush washer. Ugh, just when I thought I was out of the woods, I went to turn the machine on to do the air purge procedure, and it won't start because I keep blowing a fuse. So I started tracing all the wires near the transmission since that's where I was working. That's when I felt this huge ball of jacked up wires that totally got shredded by the drive belt. I must have routed the backup safety switch incorrectly when I attached it to the transmission. This is pretty disgusting. Hopefully some good comes out of this and my ignorance will save someone out there. Okay, let's clean up these wires and reattach them with some heat shrink butt connectors. I'm going to use the ones that have glue inside to hopefully seal the exposed conductors. Now I'm going to wrap this hot mess in some electrical tape to keep it all together and hopefully away from anything that it might catch on. Alright, let's end this thing already. I successfully performed the air purging procedure and there are no leaks coming from the transmission. I guess this thing lives to mow another day. Based on what the oil looked like when I drained it, I think I'm going to plan on changing the oil every year. Hopefully next year things will go more smoothly. If you're a fan of this series, hit that like button and consider subscribing. If I encounter anything new related to this mod, I'll be sure to post about it, so hit that bell icon as well if you want to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.